Oh, what's up guys? Welcome to Voicey here. This is your host, Captain Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called Medusa Was My Principal. So my high school reunion is coming out this year and I already have gotten my invitation to RSVP ahead of time in the mail. I didn't really enjoy high school, so I might not go. That is a story for another subreddit. This is the story about how an entitled woman became our principal and made everyone miserable. So my sophomore year, our old principal finally retired. He had been there for years. It's just time for him to retire. Now we all thought the job would go to the assistant principal. He was qualified for the job, well liked by the students, and he also had been there for years. For this story, I'll call him Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool was liked by everyone. He would loan students lunch money if they needed it, sign permission slips, give us a pass if we were running late for class for a reason like we couldn't get our locker open, or we got held up in another class and would even perform magic tricks. We thought he would be the new principal. Nope. Somehow, our entitled woman snatched the job. I will call her Medusa. Medusa was just a horrible woman. We don't even know how she got a job. Rumor had it she used her husband's position as a member of the school board to get the job. Possible this is true, but I'm not sure. My little town does do some shady crap. Medusa immediately started enacting strict and harsh rules on us. Here are some I remember. If you were late to lunch, you didn't eat. In her words, you should have been here before the doors closed if you were hungry. No more vending machines. We had a small area by the auditorium that had a couple soda machines and three snack machines. We were only allowed in the area during free time between lunch and our fourth hour class. She had the machines removed, saying the reason was, we don't need to be eating junk food. Instead, she set up a table with things like bottled water and fresh fruit. No one really bought it since a bottle of water was $3.50 when at the machine it would have cost us only 75 cents. Drinks now had to be inspected by teachers. It was a very stupid rule. She claimed students had been sneaking in things such as vodka, pretending it was water. If you had a drink with you, first he showed it to your teacher. They all got tiny plastic cups to take small samples and drink to test it. You then got a small note to show other teachers the drink passed. The rule was ridiculous. Many of the teachers didn't do it. They knew we were good kids. Seniors could no longer wear their class slash letterman jacket. This rule pissed off everyone. As a senior, if you had bought a class jacket or earned a letterman for one of our sports or clubs, you were allowed to wear it as part of your school uniform. She banned this. You got sent to the office if you were caught wearing it on school grounds. The jackets could even be confiscated. The list goes on. I could go on all day listing the crazy things this woman did. It was that bad. School became miserable. She even had a camera set up near bathrooms to catch kids smoking. No one smoked since all the bathrooms had smoke detectors. If you smoked, you went behind the music building like everyone else. Anyway, my senior year, Medusa went full on crazy. There were cameras everywhere now. New rules like no talking between classes and no backpacks. I couldn't wait to graduate. Now, while I was a sophomore, a girl in the freshman class was killed in a boating accident. My senior year, a group of students including myself got together to make shirts to remember her. They wanted to wear them to school, so of course we needed Medusa's permission. The shirts weren't crazy, mind you. They were black with the girl's picture on it and saying something along the lines that she hasn't been forgotten. We only wanted to wear them for a day. One day. We go to Medusa's office and explain what we want to do and ask if we can. She explodes on us. I'll cut her rant short. This is not part of the school uniform. Anyone caught with one of these shirts will be suspended for three days. We just want to remember her. She'd be a junior this year. We'll tuck them in as part of the uniform and they're black. Our uniform was black, white, or green shirts. I said no. Do not bring them on school property. Honestly, the girl is dead. She is dead, buried, and you need to move on. Several students including myself, left her office in tears over this. I even called my mom to pick me up because I couldn't stop crying. The next day, I found out that many students just walked out of their classes and left. They performed a walkout and protest. Medusa was furious. She gave some students like a month of detention for this. Furthermore, she doubled down on disrespecting students who passed suddenly either due to illness or accident. 
When a member of the senior class died due to cancer, she made an announcement saying, Anyone caught leaving flowers, notes, or idling around students' lockers will be sent to detention? This is a place for learning. You can mourn at home. Teachers were even told to send crying students to the office. They did not. Other members of the staff tried to reason with her, including Mr. Cool. She threatened to have him fired. Anyone who tried to stand to this power-crazy woman was threatened with losing their jobs or being written up. Not even her own son was safe. She kicked her son out of the house when she learned that he was dating a black girl. I wish I was making this up. His father divorced her. Her son was 16 and she kicked him out of her house because he refused to break up with the girl. Finally, by some grace of every god known to man, it is time for graduation. Now at my school, seniors got out of school two weeks early to handle our affairs. In those two weeks, we cleaned out our lockers, turned in books, got yearbooks, and there was a small ceremony for those who got scholarships. We also had to practice the actual graduation ceremony. This meant spending hours in the hot Louisiana sun while we marched up and down the football field. Everything had to be perfect for Medusa. Oh, and we had already been warned not to throw our hats. Anyone caught throwing their caps after the ceremony will not be given their high school diploma, and I'll be calling your parents. Medusa was at every practice. One of the students was heavily pregnant and asked to sit down once to rest. Not my fault you got knocked up. If you don't practice, you will not be walking come the ceremony. I better not see you sitting or slowing down everyone else. How our blood boiled at this. Oh no, hold on. It gets even worse. You've read this much, so let me put the cherry on top of her entitlement cake. Our class valedictorian had cerebral palsy. Now, he had the highest GPA in the whole school. A perfect GPA. Smart as a whip and super nice, sweet, and everyone loved him. Every girl said he was their boyfriend. The valedictorian always gives the speech and helps hand out the fake paper diplomas for the ceremony. Now, he was in a wheelchair as he could no longer walk on his own and had an assistant to help him get back and forth from classes. Medusa told everyone that he would not be allowed to give his speech or allowed on stage. Why? He is handicapped and doesn't speak very loudly. No one in the crowd will be able to understand what he says because of his disorder. Someone else will have to read the speech and assist in handing out diplomas. Everyone, and I do mean everyone, including members of the staff in my senior class, refuse to read the speech or take his place. He had earned being valedictorian. We told our parents who went to the school board. I wish I could say Medusa was fired, but she wasn't. Instead, she was just forced to allow him on the stage to hand out the diplomas. But she didn't let him give his speech. Instead, she read it, which was heartbreaking for him. I was so happy to get away from that woman. As a last form of protest, when everyone had gotten their diplomas, we all threw our caps. Caps everywhere. We still got our diplomas. Today, Medusa is no longer at the school. The story I heard was that she was fired after she humiliated a group of students in a school assembly for being obese. Parents got lawyers involved and the school board didn't want a lawsuit. Mr. Cool is acting principal. Sorry this is such a long story, but this woman was one of the reasons I didn't enjoy school. She was a miserable, entitled woman who in turn forced everyone else to be miserable just like her. A monster of a Karen drunk on the power of being able to control the lives of high school students. How messed up can you be? Wow. Um, I've got no words. <laughs> Jeez, how the, the last sentence just sums up the story. How messed up can you be? Like, eesh. This story is called Mother Does Not Believe One of My Telescopes Is Worth 10,000 Euros, Tries to Steal One. Background I am into stargazing and deep sky photography, like the Andromeda Galaxy, since about eight years, and acquired quite a bit of hardware over the years. My most expensive setup is my deep sky photography setup, which would cost around 10,000 to 12,000 euros to buy new. It is also my smallest setup, as I picked it to be mobile and lightweight so it looks rather unimpressive. Also important, it can only be used for photography. You cannot look through it by yourself, so it is useless without a very decent camera. Usually I carry two other setups with me, one with a high focal length and one with a short one. Both are Dobbler telescopes, which mainly means they are very stable but heavy as f 43 and 54 kilograms in total, both in all roughly around 2,000 euros. 
Once a year, I go on a camping trip with my best friend to Finland. We enjoy the low light pollution and the cold weather a lot. We usually set up the telescopes right at the start and leave two big ones outside for the whole duration of the stay and have the expensive one out only when we need it. It is quite normal that people are very interested and we are more than happy to show them and explain them the basics. Even though most are disappointed by the huge quality difference between what you see on a photo and with the naked eye. On to the story. We had all telescopes out, hoping to stack some nice M31 images and get a few good looks. Just as we started, a mother and her teenage daughter come up to us. She asked what it is we were doing and my friend happily explained it all to them and showed them some closer stuff in one of the telescopes while I was preparing the photography setup and programming everything. This went on for a few minutes and after a while, the mother jokingly, not really, suggested that we should give her daughter one of our telescopes as we are only two people and do not need three telescopes. We explained to her that the different body types are for different applications, thus we need all. We also told her that our telescopes are quite expensive, but that she could buy her daughter some beginner ones for around 200 to 400 euros. Of course, she was not going to have that and told her daughter to test the small, expensive and just set up telescope. I could luckily stop her before she did any harm to my aim and explain the price of the setup and that our time actually runs short and we need to start soon. Of course, she did not believe a single word I said and claimed it would be a 50 euro toy and perfect for her daughter, but we eventually got rid of her. Just a little bit after schedule, which is fine for such objects. We went on with our night, had some successful shots, and somewhere around 1 a.m. decided it's time to go to sleep. So I quickly took the photography setup in the car and locked the Dobbler mounting to its corresponding telescope so it cannot be moved anymore unless you move it all at once. Self-made locking mechanism, very proud. We went to our tents, and while my friend was probably already sleeping, I was still on my phone for an hour or so until I heard some noise outside. Hoping it would either be people seeing the northern lights or some wild animal like a fox, I got my shoes and sneaked outside, just to see a small person in the dark, desperately trying to carry our biggest 54 kilogram telescope away. It took me a second to understand what was going on, and as I realized it, the person saw me as well and just went off as if nothing ever happened in a fast pace. Sadly, I was not fast enough in my thinking to follow the person, but I am still absolutely certain it was the mother who was trying to steal one of our telescopes. And as we would not give her the small one, which she thought was cheap, she decided she would take the biggest one, which was actually the cheapest, but it looks the most expensive due to its size. We've been very lucky that no calibrations were needed after the rough handling, as every single screw has to be a perfectly accurate set, which can take hours without the right equipment. And we have also been very lucky to never see that woman and her daughter ever again. For our next holiday, I'm getting us a long stainless steel chain so we can lock the two big telescopes together for some extra security. Thank you for reading my first ever bad camping experience. May this never happen to any of you. It's so annoying how willing people are to ruin things for other people. Oh my gosh. This story is called, Karen tried to return used cough syrup, but then it got even weirder. This took place when I dragged my chronically ill ass over to my local pharmacy for some prescriptions a couple of days ago. The place was quite busy and it quickly became obvious what was causing the holdup. This woman, the archetypal Karen in every way, was at the counter arguing with the pharmacist. She was trying to return an open bottle of cough syrup because her son didn't like the taste. Yep, and she dragged her poor kid into the store with her, despite him clearly being very unwell. Poor boy just looked like death warmed up and just stood there, silently exhausted the whole time. From when I arrived, the exchange went something like this. The cast? Karen? Pharmacist. My son shouldn't have to drink something he doesn't like. Why even sell kids medications that kids won't like? I'm sorry, but taste really isn't a top priority with medications, and different kids will like different flavors anyway. Well, regardless, you're going to give me my bloody money back. I'm not forcing this crap on my son. We cannot and will not accept returns of used medications. Her directness seemed to shock Karen, who scoffed in that offended entitled way I'm sure that we're all familiar with. Well, I'm not wasting my money on a different one unless I know for sure he'll like it. What have you got? Uh, well, does your son like... Lists a few flavors. Ah! She rolls her eyes and scoffs. How the hell should I know? He needs to taste them, doesn't he? Said as though that was the most obvious thing in the world. 
Pharmacist pauses in disbelief. Excuse me? Do not make me repeat myself. You already given me a headache. There is no tasting for medications. They're, they're medications, not ice cream. You have a perfectly good bottle of cough syrup already. I suggest you make do with that. Karen did the, how dare you? And I don't know why you're being so rude, routine. But the pharmacist handled her BS like the pro she so clearly is. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Alternatively, I can have security escort you out. And Karen left, swearing up a storm, threatening to have the pharmacist fired and dragging her poor sick kid behind her. Who the hell thinks they can or should be allowed to sample medications for flavor? Onion mango flavored grapes. Karen, stupid, yada, 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 you know the drill. However, I will say this, uh, kids' ibuprofen tastes pretty good. <laughs> um, however, it's got that weird graininess, kind of texture, throat feel to it, but I don't care, I like it. I drink that stuff by the bottle. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.